Hi again, students. It's me, Mr. Baker, back again. Uh, this is part two of a parabola lesson. If you recall the last time, we were looking at this diagram, and I showed you how to find the equation of the axis of symmetry using the formula, which I put again right here. One more part you'll need to know for a parabola, something at the very bottom when it's turned down, or at the very top when it's turned the opposite way, when it's upside down. And that's called this point where it goes to the lowest or the highest point. That's called the vertex of the parabola. Okay, now you could get the vertex by doing all this work. Remember that big chart we did? You could do that. You could graph it. You could even draw this through the middle, and then you find the lowest or the highest point. So in this case, the vertex would be the coordinate 1, comma, negative 4. Why? Because you start at the origin. You go 1 in the x and negative 4 in the y, okay? And if you did it on this one, you would start at the origin, and you'd go negative 5 and down 1, so that would be negative 5, negative 1, okay? But again, it's way too much work to get the vertex on the graph. So I'm going to show you a shortcut, which is a little bit longer than uh, when we did the axis of symmetry. But good news, you start off exactly the same way, okay? So we're going to find 1, negative 4, and we're going to do it without the graph, okay? To do that, you need the equation, which is right over here. y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, so I wrote it over here. And that's the type of question you'll be answering. Find the vertex of each parabola, and then they give you the equation, okay? So you start off with the axis of symmetry. Write the formula, and just substitute, okay? Remember this is A, this is B, and this is C. So B is negative 2, the opposite is positive 2. The bottom is 2 times A, or 2 times 1, which is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So now we know 1. Now notice that this x equals 1 is the axis of symmetry. No matter where this point comes out, even if the parabola was up here, it would still go through the axis of symmetry. So the point, uh, or the axis of symmetry, goes right through it. So now we know the x value, which is 1, of the coordinate, which is called the vertex. So we're going to write our answer, and we'll start with this number. Whatever you get when you do the axis of symmetry, that's the x value in the vertex. Okay. Now to get the y value, you have to realize that every point on the parabola can be substituted and it will work inside this equation. So all we got to do is go to the equation and substitute the number we just got, x equals 1. So now copying the equation, we get y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. Okay, and then we just work that out. We get 1 minus 2 minus 3, and 1 minus 2 is minus 1, minus 1 and minus 3 is minus 4. Okay, that answer gives you the second part of the vertex. That's the value of the y in the vertex. So there's your answer. The vertex, you could label it if you want, it's 1 comma negative 4. And notice that's exactly what we see right here. But this way, you don't need the graph. You don't need the chart you'll save yourself quite a bit of time, okay? Let's do a couple more examples. Here's the second one. Again, we use the formula, minus b over 2a. Okay, now notice this just has a and b. That's all we need for the formula. So a is 4, b is negative 16. Negative b, you change the sign, you get 16. 2 times a would be 2 times 4. Okay, we'll just simplify that. 2 times 4 is 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Don't forget the x equals. That's part of the answer. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. If you see that question on a test, such as the final exam, and it says axis of symmetry, you stop. That's your answer. But if the question says what's the vertex, you go a little further. You substitute in here whatever you just got for the axis of symmetry. So you get 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2. Okay, and now we just simplify. Just don't forget to do order of operations. You square it first. That's 4. Then you multiply. 4 times 4 is 16. 
minus, here you multiply, 16 times 2 is 32, and you have a plus 16 and a minus 32, so you subtract and keep the sign of the larger number, and you'll get negative 16. Now, don't stop after you get this answer. You have to write the vertex. The vertex is a coordinate with an x and a y, and a comma, of course, in between. So it's 2 for x and negative 16 for y, and there you have your vertex. That would be your answer. Okay? Let's look at this example right here. Okay? This is one where there is no x value. So if you want, you could think of it as 25x squared plus 0x minus 9. Okay, because zero times any number is always zero, and when you add zero, you're not changing it. So this is the same as this. The only reason I wrote it that way is so that you realize this is A, the zero is B, and the C, which we're not using, would be negative nine. So using the formula, minus B over 2A, we have the uh, zero, it doesn't need a sign, so you could just simply write zero. If you do put a sign, it's not wrong, you just don't need it. The bottom is 2 times a, which is 25. And then to simplify, that 0 divided by 2 times 25, which is 50. And any time you divide a number into 0, the answer is 0. OK, so that's the axis of symmetry. But now we're going to substitute into the original equation. And that will give us the vertex answer. So we get 25 times 0 squared minus 9. Okay, this is just zero because zero times zero is zero, and zero times any number is always zero. So all this is zero. We don't need it. Just negative nine. Okay, now don't forget to write your answer to the vertex. It's a coordinate. The first part is the x, and the x is zero, and the y is negative nine, and we're done. Okay, and that's it. One more example, and then you should be able to handle the homework for this lesson. Okay, again, the axis of symmetry is minus b over 2a. Okay, now notice it's in order. a, b, we don't need c. Minus b means change the sign of the middle number, so this is 12. The bottom is 2 times a, a is 3, so it's 2 times 3. Okay, and if we simplify, we get 12 divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So your axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Okay, to get the second answer, you're just going to substitute 2 into the equation. So we have 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 1. Okay, we have to simplify using order of operations. So we square it, that's 4. 4 times 3 is 12 minus, here we multiply, 12 times 2 is 24. And then we'll bring down the plus 1. Okay, now 12 take away 24. Unlike signs, you subtract and keep the sign of the larger. You'll get negative 12. Negative 12 and a plus 1 is negative 11. Okay, remember to use the sign of the larger number. So now that we have our y and our x value, we just write it as a coordinate. Here's your answer. It's going to be 2. And it's going to be negative 11. Okay, and that's it. Uh, you should have also gotten a quiz along with this lesson. Please do that immediately and email it back. Make sure it's clear before you email it. Thank you very much, students. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.